I promise you, I follow Deepak Chopra and Satguru and Reverend Ike quotes, many other ministers and uh, profound teachers of, of wisdom on Instagram. I follow them all. And I follow a reasonable amount of pop culture. They're my friends, actually. You know, almost everybody in pop culture. So of course I follow Will Smith or, you know, whoever is on Instagram. These are my friends. Um, and then I see what's going on right now, which is typical, but I think enhanced more, multiplied in a way. The lack of interest in real life suffering of others and real uh, war-torn countries, people, that, you know, the Palestinian plight, the way the fear is coming out of Israel and how they're reacting. Um, some of that stuff is of interest to me. But that's why I'm on Instagram. But I've never seen so many people thrill to tear each other down. Because our stars, remember, the stars, our stars helped Dr. King have his march, helped Minister Farrakhan promote his Million Family March, Million Man March. Their voices echoed the calls from those leaders for us to come together. My experiences with the collective hip hop culture, uh, the hip hop summits work, where Eminem had 10,000 people come out to learn financial literacy and Beyonce did the same in Houston and Nelly did the same in St. Louis and just all over the country, rappers stood up to help us with gang violence and financial literacy. And they did it together because each stage would include like seven or eight artists. Little Wayne was there next to, you know, other people from New Orleans. He was not the only New Orleans artist, but he was there and they were together. And their togetherness on issues matters. Um, they don't have to all think alike, but those who do think about the suffering of their communities and come together make a dramatic difference. And there's always been a rap beef, but never so much excitement. And again, I, I know it's like pro wrestling, as Rick Rubin used to say. And it's okay to have these, I guess it's okay to have these skirmishes. I remember saving lives. I mean, I would get in the middle of people who were gonna kill each other. Many, many times I saved the lives of rappers or saved them from clashing in ways that were not just verbal. And I see now one thing leads to another. Call this guy a, a white boy or a pedophile. Call this guy, you know, it, even saying, oh, look, I raised my children properly. That's my focus. I'm a real man because I do the following. Shit, I can't feel good if you're not quite the same man he is. Every little punchline is hurtful. And they lead to more hurtful punchlines and to gunplay. How many people have died in hip hop for, for over rap beat or drill music? This idea of using our poetry to tear each other down is, is the lead thing on Instagram. More important than anything else. More important than destruction of the environment, more important than anything, the possible world war, more important than anything. People say, oh, I just need entertainment. So that way I don't go crazy from all the real world stuff. And I get it. But what kind of entertainment are we consuming? Is any of it really uplifting or helping us to be better or happier? Do we feel better when people are down so we can feel up? We have to look inside ourselves and try to look up and be excited about our brother's rise, not his fall. So when you tear someone down or when you watch someone tear someone down, try not to get so excited. I know it's fun to watch to some people. If I had 
a nickel for every nasty meme sent to me by people who, whose lives were enhanced and built by Sean Combs. It's like, seems a bit hypocritical since the only reason you have a life is you worked for him. Or he gave you a job and or lifted you up somehow. Watching our brothers fall is hurtful. Having everybody get together and laugh at our brothers fall or supporting the tearing down of our brothers, it's tough. They may think it's, you know, entertaining. Some of the memes are funny, right? But we have to look up, train our mind to see the good in things and not the negative. It's a quick spark. It's a quick spark. Oh, that's interesting, or that's funny, and then our gut hurts. You ever be around someone who's gossiping and they say, guess what happened to so-and-so? The first thing you say is, what? And then they tell you the story and you guys think about it and maybe laugh about it. And then the next time they say, and guess what else happened? And you say, what? And then you're like, ah, oh, drained. You feel sad, you feel sick. You feel depressed even because you have participated in so much negative talk that now you feel negative. This is why we go to church or to Kirtan and sing to Krishna or to God or to talk to the rabbis, the reverends and the imams so we can lift ourselves up. And if we can have uplifting dialogue amongst each other, more often than not, we will feel better, be happier, live longer and be part of a different cycle one that spins us up rather than tears us down. That's it. I want to just share that. It's nothing too new. I was just meditating with a bunch of people and I said, um, life is like a movie. Just watch in amazement, get popcorn, be present and watch. The doer gets his instruction from God. So just try to get God's instruction. He will not tell you to do this dumb shit tell you to do something else. We tell you to, to turn away from the dirt, turn towards the uplifting, inspiring things. Try your best. It's tough. We live in a very toxic world. Try to be good. The word good is funny, but you know what it means. It seems simplistic. If you want to be happy, be good. That's it. Have a beautiful day, yogis.